I, there's a campaign that takes place after this. Oof. Like, do we need to roll new characters? Is this how you get rid of us? <laughs> is, uh, have you been made unconscious? No, I'm still so, at uh, about half. Message me how many hit points you have left on uh, Zoom. Yep. Here. All right, well, <laughs> it's just a, well, aren't you the sturdy tart? <laughs> All right, uh, but it is now your turn. Man, fuck you. And I'm just going to start making attacks at him. <laughs> really? As I look at it, the number you said. Is this me, technically, uh, <laughs> is he technically flanked for advantage? You know what? Yeah. Since Awaka's riding him? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there's no real way to not be flanked by this. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Come on, Bahamut! Get the lead out! <laughs> Oh, take uh, the wheel. 21. <laughs> That's a 21. It's like slim pickings at the end of uh, <laughs> of, uh, of uh, Dr. Strange Love. Yeah! <laughs> uh, what was see. that? 21. 21 hits. And because I'm a monster, I'm going to sink a second level uh, smite into him. Yeah! <laughs> So that's, uh, 13 slashing damage and 12 radiant damage. Doggies. Um, cool. And then I take my second swipe. Yeah, you do. Because <laughs> that's still just the action. That's So my slow is still not, a. Uh, Let's see, so that's 17 plus 6, so I'm sure that hits. That hits. Uh, I'll swing a first level smite into this one. <laughs> oh god. Dice everywhere. It's, it's just the Halo thing. plasma gun sound effects happening while I'm riding this thing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> that's 12 slashing and 11 radiant. Fantastic. I am going to uh, ask you to roll a d10. A d10, yes. sure. Oh, this. Uh, that is a three. All right. You are able to slice off one of the eye stalks. Woo! And just what? Oh, Did I know? On. And I'm going to uh, try to make my save now at the end. Yes, please. Oh, natural twenty. Ooh. Good to go, buddy. Then I pop up and go, "Hey, chief, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> no reason to be crass. <laughs> Xenathar has been nothing but polite. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so, top of the round again, Oaka. It is looking a bad. So I, I look at it in the eyes like. <laughs> Nothing but kind is <laughs> nothing but kind is making somebody bread and bringing it over for dinner, not launching a fucking death ray. And I just, <laughs> as I'm riding, I just fire the first shot into it. <laughs> uh, Sixteen plus nine, so that hits. Uh, and that will be. Uh, let's go. That's eight piercing damage, and then the second shot. I'm going to use the last. Actually, actually, hold on, wait. No, I'll, I'll. Do I have to use sneak attack on the first attack? I do. Yeah. I think it specifies. I think, I think oh, okay. so. Yeah, yeah. So hold on, let me. They after, tend to know that you're there after, after you the stab them. Because the first one, it's not a sneak, it's sneak not so, anymore. Yeah, it's well, not so well, sneaky. Since, is sneak attack also if they're if. He attacks somebody else, even though he I'm riding him. I mean, it, it's technically because you have He's advantage. Like, anytime you have advantage. Out of context, anywhere else, people would just be like, yeah. "In context, in this game, we still go." <laughs> Hold on, let me. You're all immature and fun. <laughs> uh, if you have advantage on the attack roll. 
Yeah. You so. don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within five feet of it. That enemy isn't capacitated, and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. So. But you would have advantage for flanking anyway. Yeah. I would have. Oh, okay. So yeah. hold on. That's eight piercing because damage just regularly. On top of it, it's still the five foot range. So it's not like zero feet. There's no way to measure that. So. So I can roll it. Yeah. Yeah. Because technically you're flanking. My first, my first sneak attack roll. Plus five. Eight plus five. Thirteen. Nice. That's the first shot. Then the second shot, I'm going to use my second grit point to yeah. make this a violent shot to try right. to down this thing. So, that's what they're natural 20. Man. You're being, like, covered with the juices of, from the ice dogs <laughs> that can cut off. <laughs> okay, that is... Uh, that was close, but that was an 18 plus a 9. Uh, to hit? Yeah. Yeah, that hits. But I still hit with 2d10 because of the violent shot, so... Right. Double 4, so... 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12 points of piercing damage. Alright. Uh, it is... Barely... Just... <laughs> can't even make words anymore, even though you barely could understand the words to begin with. Just <laughs> I'm just, like, <laughs> shooting into its eye, like, will somebody please? <laughs> uh, Andy. Alright, I'm up. so annoyed with the fact that literally nothing I have done for this entire time has done any damn thing. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to burn two of my sorcery points to, as a bonus action, cast Firebolt at it, which is a I get to roll this time. <laughs> fire bolts, not fireball, yes. right? That's a, no, fire bolt. And that's okay. an eight, 18 plus 7, 25. That hits. Great. <laughs> it takes 2d10. Um, so Andy's pretty mad at this point, right? Yes. Okay. That's 8 fire damage. And then, don't take this away from me. That's 8 fire damage. And then I'm going to take off my back this stupid crossbow I've been hanging out with this whole fucking time and as my action I'm gonna shoot a crossbow bolt at it alright fire the crossbow <laughs> I see miss. her I see her like how long have you had that <laughs> that's a 13 plus something uh, 13 plus 5 18 18 is the AC <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> if you kill this thing with a crossbow bolt that is a uh, no four plus two. That's a whole six piercing damage. All right. Do, do I smell a slight singe from uh, Awaka's feathers? Just a little bit of that. Uh... Uh, there's some acidity to it right now. Yeah. It's... <laughs> uh, Watch where you're firing that thing. I will say <laughs> this: no, for those up. of you who are paying attention to Andy, you see that in her anger. Um, there is a somewhat like you know that that the waves uh, from that heat can give off uh, to give kind of like that shimmer in the air. Sorry, you know like how uh, heat gives off like that shimmer in the air and it kind of like makes it all wavy. Off of asphalt. That is all emanating from Andy right now. Oh. <laughs> in her anger. Yeah. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? I think you can move, and that's about it. Oh, that's my action and my bonus action. No, I don't have anything else. I'm going to stay where I am. No, no, I lied. I'm not. I don't want to be in a full. I don't want to be in a line. Uh, <laughs> I'm no fool. Uh, I'm going to. Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> my, what the lovely bunch of enemies. <laughs> yeah, Just 30 I, feet I that way. Um, go away. It's going to use its last legendary action. <laughs> And it's going to aim its eye stalk at you, Awaka. <laughs> it's just like... In his face. Ah! <laughs> um, okay, so I need you to make a strength saving throw. Uh, you know what? You know what? Since this thing is getting close to death, might as well chicken die. <laughs> you know what to do, folks. Chicken. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> that's, that's cocked. That's my first cocked roll. Ah. Come on. That feels it's way cock. too on the nose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Natural 20! What is this dice? It is 
chicken guy! This is his golden snitch. Buck, that buck! Amazing. Okay, so, um, no, it, it you feel like uh, uh, the start of a telekinetic grip try to grasp around you and throw you off of its body, but it is unable to in this poorly weakened state. It is now burned through all its legendary actions. Like, I've written, I've written bulls nastier than you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it can muster at this point. <laughs> uh, Arlen. Yay. This thing is looking pretty bad. Uh huh. Yeah. No. That's fine. So, Arlen, having it's just. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You. Need to go away. Alors? She just looks at down at her hand, looks at the ring of the ram, and expends three charges. Oh, okay. I'm on this thing. <laughs> it's fine. I can Hold bring on, you back okay. up. <laughs> it's fine. I can bring you back up. Again, ah! like a do? true cleric. I love it. <laughs> Uh -huh. Be kind. Three charges right in a row. No! High or low? High or low? <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh. He's done it again! Again! <laughs> again? Just after <laughs> I rolled one, you roll one? What is the deal? <laughs> Once again, Jessica Crunk. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I might actually have to bring you back up. Yeah, pro <laughs> I'm probably riding this thing into the wall. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Awaka, if you could yeah. please make a uh, deck saving throw. Uh, you actually get to add four to that, by the way. Yes. I do. Yes, because you're within ten feet of me and my aura. Oh, okay, great. Chicken die yeah. again. G give him, give oh, him any no. bonus. Oh no, natural no. one. The chicken no. die giveth, and the chicken die taketh away. Fucking to, chicken die! You will, you will fall, but it's only ten. It's only twenty feet. So let's find out. You know what? This this ram thing launches this thing like into the wall, like it did with the blood fiend, right? Right. So can I? Since it's a natural one, can I like ride this thing with it and then like kind of let go right at the take, end, just like? Ah! Okay. <laughs> Well, you're gonna take two d6 uh, uh, damage. So let's see. Uh, that's nine points of falling damage. So. Okay. S so I I have a question for you. Um, since it was a crit, do you want me to roll twice the physical dice, or just roll its regular damage and then double it? Go go for. Your choice, dealer's choice. <laughs> lots of dice, lots and lots of lots of dice. Roll the dice. Roll, roll the roll. dice. We want, we want to hear, we want to hear the clicking. We want to hear the click clacks. You're roll really telling a dice goblin here. that whether or not you want to <laughs> <laughs> roll more dice. Never. I had I to ask. I had to ask. More dice. Oops. The whole point of this it. game. <laughs> yeah. I, Awaka, I'm so sorry. <laughs> So, yeah. so this is on top of the nine that I'm going to take, just falling off yeah, of it. Yeah, but I will say, okay, it, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, he don't, says. Don't worry. I rolled a natural one, so he might want to worry. <laughs> watch, watch. She like perma kills me with this, <laughs> with this frigging attack. After I've ridden in this back. thing, I can bring it back. You got the diamonds, sweet. <laughs> That's 30, and I'm not going to kill him yet. <laughs> oh god, I might have actually just killed him. <laughs> this section of math is brought um, to you by the Canadian Education System. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm bad at maths. That's why it's taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> She's disappeared. She's gone ethereal. 
how excited <laughs> Furball she is. Furball magic. I just go. Furball magic. <laughs> got so excited. Just bam. Bam. Invisible. This was supposed to be a fun bonus episode. <laughs> I actually. I mean, okay. I'm having no, fun. Okay. I'm having fun. My brain, my brain actually broke. Where the hell is my phone? Right. I, will, I, will I know. I'm going. I'm going. I'm sorry. Two seconds. Two seconds. Two seconds. Ah! So, here's the thing. The beholder <laughs> explodes essentially from the force of this ring of the ram. Uh, Awaka, you fall off of it from the just. Just combustion of the... seven. Yeah. Do I take that? You fall to the ground, and what happens is, after it goes, uh, it gets hit by the force from uh, Arlen's punch, uh, you hear it just go, and the illusion kind of, like, glitches as everything just kind of slows down, and things begin to kind of, like, accidentally crumble around you and what happens at that point is um, from the small illusion of the uh, beholder you see uh, the more familiar version of uh, one that you have encountered already and it's spectator as the illusion around of the forest has now just turned the entire room into a half dome of stone very much what it's like behind me. Completely empty and void of everything. As all the illusion mm -hmm. of the wonder that was around you fades. And Spectator floats up. Wow, that was really good! <laughs> Spectator, um... Uh... Are you trying to kill us? No, no, no one was gonna get hurt. This was just... I, just... I got yeah. we we got hurt. Like <laughs> I, I, am... I think we'd beg to differ that one. You hurt. see, you see, <laughs> crumpled, you say that, though? crumpled. You say that and you look at yourselves. There's not a scuff or mark on you. Oh shit! Arlen just right. very quickly goes up to Awaka and says, "Gives away." And hugs him. <laughs> oh, oh, just because we're not hurt doesn't mean I'm not sore. Oh, <laughs> there we go. They were building teamwork. Uh, is Awaka like still messy from the the fake beholder illusion? Uh, I mean, you you fell onto like essentially stone, but it doesn't really hurt. You, you know, because everything kind of went away at that point. My 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 thighs are just really sore from. Yeah. Oh man, I have I haven't pulled a haven't pulled a seven second in a long time. Oh, I, gotta say, That's I was what she really said. impressed by all of you. I wanted to surprise you and I just see what you were capable of. But man, you really did kick some butt. Surprise or shock us? Because I'm not sure Zenithar is the way to. A surprise is like, hey, look, I picked you a gâteau, but uh, that was like, hey, look, I'm going to kill you. I, don't know. I mean, in in your defense, though, spectator, it was very surprising. Uh, you can say that again. It's my favorite part from a very classic book that I've read called Night of the Beholder. It's that explains quite a lot. I wasted ten bullets around like fifty <laughs> years ago when that thing was. Really popular. Oh. Green stuff has like a whole bunch of copies up in the library of different of that fun genre. I think Xanathar's a hero. Just misunderstood. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, you know, I, I actually tried to be able to talk to him, um, to maybe get to know him and maybe his motivations and such, but yeah, unfortunately he wasn't, he was not. You yeah, really he was sucked out there. I, no, not my my roles were fine. Uh, no, I mean like you tried to do stuff and you just cannot do it. All right, buddy. Yeah. All it's, right. <laughs> well, I'm just saying fact. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's true. It's very it, you. Uh, your like surprise. Post, post game uh, analysis. <laughs> yeah, your your surprise has certainly. Uh, my advice opened. would be: whatever you did, don't do that. Oh, for, for, for yeah. For, I, honestly, honestly, I I hear you loud and clear, spectator. I would I would 
Mm, I would never. Good, because a lot of people say that my voice is a bit abrasive. Uh, no, it's, in in uh, insight check is Andy actually furious? Dulcet tones. Uh, I mean, sure. I don't even need you to roll anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, well, this what... was great. I think we'll still do this again sometime. And so, like, what is this place? It's just a giant brick room. Like, that's... yeah, this is the war room. Ah, that the war is... room, huh? Yeah, you Very can fight and named. I thought you weren't supposed to fight in the war room. Oh, that's that was advice that went poorly mistaken. <laughs> just a bunch of bureaucratic nonsense, in my opinion. <laughs> but what do I know? So, how does this room work? Do you? A floats I'm... over uh, to um, the center of the room, and using his one central eye, just kind of activates a. Uh, very similar crystal pedestal uh, that comes up. Um, it's uh, about five feet tall um, with a... Uh, it, the the crystal in the center is very round and dome, half dome-like. Um, and Don't. in it, there is a... Uh, there's like a bookshelf <laughs> slot and he grabs one uh, with his eye and it's the very book that he was talking to you about. So these books are enchanted and they can be read by the center post. And I can have them make to life scenarios of all my favorite things that come from books. And uh, 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 a lot. I like to read things with lots of action and excitement. Do you have any books that are like, um, calm, maybe? I mean, with like not action and excitement that will try to kill you. Also, also, may I say, I am room. trying to hide my anger and I did roll a 25 deception. <laughs> I mean, you could, but it's a war room. That'd be a lame name to kind of put some stuff in there. I mean, it's their tower. You can decide whatever they call it. See, I told I mean, you, our tower. I told you that. See, Walker? You, oh, you All know. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> and he just grabs the book and starts to float up away. Bye, yeah. spectator. Ugh. Arlen grabs her notepad sticks it in the slot don't <laughs> <laughs> nothing happens you realize that the books have to be enchanted to be activated <laughs> why <laughs> i just look at her like <laughs> why <laughs> well you're not ready for another fight no i mean it's probably for the best because i don't think you want what's in here to come and fight us uh I have a feeling that's going to be another conversation, but, uh... <sighs> They're just notes. I promise. Observational, or... Bit of both. <laughs> Recent observations, and I kind of, like, cock an eye at her. Mm. No. Insight check. <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> Natural one again. Uh, we still have the bonus. Uh, we would still have the the plus ten from. Oh no! Uh, yes. I mean that's probably going to go away by the time we come back. I'm guessing. So I'll eight just, hours. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just put it back to what it was before. I just woke up to a walker and I um cast present digitation on his clothing. He had a bit of dust and i just um continue walking out of the room a bit <laughs> you just see like a colony of dust just because <sighs> he's essentially never washed these <laughs> she didn't see it because she was kept walking <laughs> also also when did you have why didn't you tell me you bought a crossbow <laughs> she's just kept walking Andy! <laughs> no, I'm gonna follow along. Why'd you roll damage again? <laughs> Stop rolling damage. Did? I'm gonna turn around and start following, uh. Start following Andy. I'm just gonna pause. We're gonna take a little break, and then we can. Um, we're gonna break for like five minutes, and then we're just gonna, um. If you have something in mind that you'd like to go to, like a different room or something. Let me know, and then it'll be 
you know, brief enough. It's certain encounters that we've had, it's kind of like, I'm focused on what I'm doing, I don't yeah. know what you guys are doing. Smite me, almighty oh smite her. <laughs> That's a good way to start. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so after you exit out of that room, um, where would each of you like to go, or at least take some time to check out, if so, if you so choose? Um, I just I immediately I I keep following Andy until I catch up to her, and I'm like, hey, hey, Mart. I just wanted to go to the fireplace to sit down for a second. I know, I know. You just seemed a little heated back there, and it's nothing to get. It's nothing to get upset about. It wasn't for real consequences or anything like that. I'm fine. I was a little annoyed at the end of the fight, of course, but I'm fine. You had heat waves coming off of you. I had what? Before you shot that firebolt, which was pretty spectacular, but also right by Thanks. my knees. Like, literally, look. <laughs> I just show her, like, the feathers still have a little bit of a, sc of a scorch mark on them. I, uh, just healing word real quick. Oh, I, mean, I know, I just, just for funsies. Uh, it's just, just for flavor. Yeah, it's just for flavor, but it's, uh, seven points of healing. <laughs> they, like, it, like, heals over. But, uh, before you shot that off and I was riding this thing, I looked over at you and you had like these waves of you know like when you gotta when you're out but the best way I can equate it is when you're out in the desert and you're looking at the sand dunes and you see like these little squiggle lines coming off the ground no that sounds very weird it looked like you, it looked like you had heat coming off of you Oh. And I've never um, seen you do that before. I didn't feel hot. I'm just saying. I know missing is pretty upsetting and but you can tr I mean that that firebolt got us to near to the end if it weren't for that. I mean You would have been all... perfect. You would have been perfectly fine, let's be honest, if it wasn't for that. But I do appreciate you trying to make me feel better. I like squint my eyes at her and I'm like, remember what I said before when you can be honest with me? <laughs> yes. Mm hmm. Another thing. When did you buy a crossbow? I found a crossbow. I have never seen that well, once never, before I've never today. I've used it. Well, you're not very perceptive then. I've had it. You've had it in your... Underneath my my cape. You do know that you're supposed to get these things registered, right? I'm not worried about that. Um, you absolutely have to be worried about that. Why? I'm not going to use it. Bloody hell, I only used it today because I was a bit frustrated. It's a good thing to have for self-defense. But, we have a lot of things for self-defense when I make my hand light on fire. Yes, but these, and I like take out the revolver and point to the, these particular things have a certain degree of responsibility that come with them. Are you saying I'm not responsible? No, I'm just saying. And I could start walking away. No, Andy, that's. <sighs> I keep walking. Meanwhile, uh, Arlen. Where have you mm -hmm. decided to roam? Uh, as I probably would have been one of the last ones out of the room, did the pedestal go back down into the ground? Yes. As we were leaving? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> chaos demon. <laughs> She's curious. Stop trying to insert things into things, okay? <laughs> it's not that kind of a show. Thanks. Here's what she proclaimed. <laughs> 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 All of a sudden we hear Andy. What? <laughs> um Well in that case she probably would have been trying to find 
<sighs> Try and find like a balcony or outdoors or something. Like something to replicate that green space again. She probably would have like opened up the door again of just the room we were in and just be like, are you like a forest again or stone? And then. So as you go up uh, a set of stairs, mm -hmm. um, again, different, touching everything. No. <laughs> different carpet than mm. this time. Um, and you find yourself in a new place. It's very lush and green. And Andy had spoken earlier, mistaking the prior room that you were in for an arboretum. This looks genuine. She would definitely go in. Okay. And just quickly, Xanathar, it's Reese. The only thing you hear are the tweeting of birds and the rustling of the leaves in a spring-like atmosphere around you as a breeze just quietly goes through. Instantly casts um, a speech of, uh, what is it? Speech, speech of beast and leaf or whatever it's called. The fur bog one. Where did you go? The runaway. Speech of beast and leaf. And just to see if these are real plants or illusionary plants and creatures. They're actually real. Hmm. And you feel the true uh, authentic nature somehow in this little pocket dimension of a room. What does the... What what does above look like? Well, in stark contrast to the previous floors, um, it's a lush, verdant forest. Uh, you can hear insects buzzing. Um, you hear birds singing from the top of the trees. Uh, there's a path that cuts through the forest, um, but uh, before you, but it, what appears to be sunlight streams through the canopy of trees above you. Um, if you could make uh, an arcana check. Yeah, I can try. Five. It's odd because this feels very real in terms of your other senses of nature. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to determine really if it's truly an illusion or if it's just the room itself is containing something to be able to make this natural. Uh, there is a, a table um, in the clearing of the center of the room. There is um, a, a shack, basically. Uh, containing uh, botanist equipment, uh, alchemical supplies. Uh, you see uh, a couple of pieces of paper on there, and uh, one of them says, um, The origins of the blight is a horrific one. Born of the tree which grew from the stake plunged through the heart of a powerful vampire. They are evil from their conception, though luckily not particularly intelligent. They are, however, adept at ambushing the unwary. However, I have made them quite domesticated in my time here. Mm. Okay. There she is um, a bit of rustling in this shack, and you... <sighs> Here, coming from behind it, uh, just this gentle-looking, um, what would be described as a coatl, which is a kind of a 
flying snake of sorts? <laughs> snake with oh, wings sorry. would be the best way to describe it. As in a Quetzalcoatl? <laughs> Axolotl quadl? Uh, it's it's got the you know appearance of a snake with bird-like wings, uh, and as it sees you, it like with a surprised face of oh, and it polymorphs itself into a humanoid, still looking like lizard folk, but in this time it's wearing uh, overalls. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Are you the new keeper? Uh, I mean, we? Oui. Yes, I think we are. Um, for for the time being, temporarily, we're we're trying to find uh, Monsieur Greenstaff, but um, uh, we. Oui. Yes, we are. He's been gone for quite some time. Had That's to keep why all we are looking for myself. Him. Very uh, mm, clean and well maintained, but you seem to know that kind of life. Mm -hmm. If Green you need thumb, any help, if with... you will. And he kind of smiles with his lizard. Thumb. <laughs> if you need any help with anything, I would be more than happy to to help you. I um, don't mind an extra hand here every now and then. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, is this is this your home? I should say so. <laughs> I stay here and I maintain the arboretum. You've done a very good job. Why, thank you. I take pride in my work. Mm -hmm. I was take. Uh, voluntarily uh, plucked from my own little world and brought here for some peace in mind and allowed me to be with plants. I love being with plants. <laughs> they don't talk back. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Well, not rude. <laughs> <laughs> no. You have to ask them the right questions and then they will... I'll surprise you. If there are any... Make sure I'm not doubling up here. Might be a once... Nope, nope, nope. Don't go to that. What is your name there, maiden? She will have just also... If there's, like, a planted pot or something like that, um, and something that's about to bloom, she will use the speech of Beast and Leaf to, like, make it bloom oh that's a beautiful <laughs> gift you have there <laughs> it uh makes it not so lonely and my name is Arne pleasure to meet you I'm Merbel hello Merbel <laughs> shakes your hand and... well I best get back to pruning I mm -hmm. think uh, if you are in need of any particular plants, you just let me know, and I'll do mm -hmm. my best to grow them for you, too sweet. Um, can I ask you a favor? Of course. You being the new keeper and all. <laughs> Would you mind, um, if... I know there are, there are probably plenty of rooms in here with... with beds and such to sleep in but um would you mind if maybe I stayed here? Not in your home you can have your cabin that is all yours I just if that's with the where plants. you are comfortable the most then yes this it's... floor be your floor as well <laughs> it's um it's nice not not really thinking about being in four walls and a ceiling. It's, Want yeah. to see something special? Oui. And he heads over to um, one of the, the tables that's covered with a couple of rags and he moves one and it looks like a, a little globe and it's got uh, a sun and a moon pattern on it. The two moons and the one sun that rotate around Draconia. 
and he gives it just a little bit of a spin, and you see it slowly, but just fast enough that the daylight sky turn into night. With the two moons hanging above. I have no need for day and night, but it's a setting of comfortableness if you prefer to make it what you wish. I... I, I do not want to, uh, and like slowly kind of like inching it back, mm -hmm. uh, it, without being rude or anything like that. Um, you notice that it is a bit of a map of it as well. So moving it to different points will mm -hmm. let you see the sky at the time where you are in different areas. Hmm. Okay. That's cool. Um, so any view of the sky you want on all of the places. So this way you don't have to keep looking outside of the tower if you want to, you know, wherever this tower ends up. Where are we right now, by the way? I have not asked in quite some time. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. That makes two of us now. <laughs> I don't, um... I, I, I don't know. I, we were, we were in... We came, I came from Mare for a while, but, um, after that, we went to the Empire, and then, I don't know, I, I, I was asleep for a lot of the carriage ride, because hmm. it was, it was long, I was, I was tired, um. I've been lots of places according to the ma previous master. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you ever make notes? Of what the sky looks like. Oh, absolutely. I take a gander each time we find a new spot, and then I add it to our little friend here. Is nowhere on there. You may look. I look. Draw me a roll of perception? No, you know this place. You know exactly where it would look like. And with a few bit of navigation rolls of the actual uh, globe, you are able to get to sky that you are familiar with. <laughs> being that it is daytime on this side of mm -hmm. the continent, with it being closer to evening on the other side, where you're originally from, mm -hmm. the beginnings of the familiar lights in the sky start to form in that mm -hmm. glow that you have found so many nights of comfort and solace in. See, this here is a reflection of wherever I've been, or rather, wherever the Keeper, the Master, has taken us. That will be extremely helpful. I... <sighs> Do you mind if we keep it on this for a minute? Not at all. And she will... Oh. Honestly, she'll probably break down crying. Oh, did something break? Are you okay? Um... No, um... This is one of the first creatures you've met, by the way, that is your height. <laughs> Ooh! Um... No, I mean, I kind of broke, so it was me that crazy. Um, it just, it's been a long while since I've been away from home, and mm. a lot happened, and everything seems very far away. I, I know it's just... We were in Volcania. Are we still there? He kind of looks over at the globe. According to the last place that this was marked, seems so. I gotta I say, know. you're a lot much nicer than the last person who came around hanging out here. Who was that? Ah, uh, well, you know, masters have assistants every now and then to come and help them with keep things... And well, uh, last last one was a bit more grumpy. We, 
Do not worry, they will not be back. Okay. <laughs> Keepers come and go, as far as I can tell in my time. I've been mm -hmm. around a while. But these plants aren't going to be pruning themselves, so I'm going to attend to them. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> I will... I will let you do it by all means. I'm I'm interrupting you. Um, but... Merci. Thank you for showing me this and sharing it. As you wish, Keeper. <laughs> Nod their head. Oh. And then transform back into its flying snake form and you see that the way it's been pruning is actually just kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> around um. the different bushes uh, from there Finn where would you be roaming around at this time so much to I'm sure everybody's surprise I would actually probably be uh, trying to figure out a way to be aligned at least somewhere close to the library try to get up into there. Yeah, you do notice that when these stairwells open up, depending on what's already been accessed and what becomes available, the stairwells no longer hide one stairwell from the other. It almost looks as if now you've gone in and you can see the other floor to the next stairwell just on the outside of the perimeter of these exits. So whereas what previous it was only on one side and then entrance on the other, you now can see that they are both like cross section of stairs to go up and down on either side, but only on rooms that you've accessed so far. All right, so I'm going to descend down into, or up to the library, uh, whichever direction I need to go to get into the library. Sure, uh, you take a little bit of a, like, where am I going? And eventually you do come around to finding Right, and I'm going to try to do my best to skim through and see if I could find any sort of, uh, see if it was broken down into a history section or anything along those lines. Uh, see if like it's cataloged by any way, shape, or form. Okay. Uh, give me an investigation check. This is not the right thing for me to be doing. Uh, that's fortunately a 19 minus 1 for an 18. Okay. The role was my um, friend. So what you do notice is that each of these bookshelves are absolutely different from one another. Uh, only, like, occasionally matching each other. And you kind of get the sense that maybe these have all been pulled from different whatever where they originally were. Uh, interplanar travel is not necessarily something you're often familiar with uh, but you have heard that Order of Scribe Wizards they really are heavily into um, multiversal theory and probably pulling from things they hope that others are looking the other way I'm literally going to be trying to find anything as far as uh history specifically of the Westlands near the church and see if there's anything even probably a little bit more recent that may have write-ups about the chastening in it. Uh, yeah, you're able to get to, um, uh, you, uh, as you're going through, you're trying to realize, okay, well, maybe it's the architecture of the, the bookshelves that can match up. And you do, in fact, find one that looks very familiar in terms of the church archives library bookshelves. Uh, and what you see there are a scattering of books. Uh, it seems like books that would be missing in the actual library seem to be here, whereas anything else that they have kept would be over there. Uh, and you do see um, a lot of records of, of uh, uh, past pontifex, uh, the history of the church grounds. Uh, there are dissertations and articles from uh, different professors at Coven University that have spoken on such matters. Um, but um, what you do find in terms of the records books, a lot of redacted material. I, 
I'm going to try to see if there's any way I can either hold it up to the light, anything like that, to try to see if I could see through redactions or anything like that. I'm sure it's probably magically redacted, but and you I just won't give right it a shot. As you try to hold one up, and it's not even like ink, it's just a black void of space <clears throat> that is covering the etchings. Can I happen to find a bookshelf that looks similar to the libraries that there would be in the Empire rather than the uh, Westlands? Yeah, give me another investigation check. Oh. Come on. Fifteen. Luckily, rolling Takes pretty Takes a bit more. Thing. But you are able to find some bookshelves that have um, similar... Uh, architecture to the, those you saw in the capital. Um, and it seems as though the bookshelves have been styled after the most popular use of architecture of the city where they came from as the, the identifying marks. And you're going through there in terms of Westland history. Uh, you see a few books about there are a lot of letters of correspondence, mostly bureaucratic stuff, a lot of official um, letters of just, we formally invite you to witness the such and such and such. Um, records of just visitations in terms of uh, events like imperial balls or uh, religious ceremonies uh, or any sort of uh, summits where the pontifex and the emperor would uh, meet during the several reigns of time of the, the Sylvan Empire. But nothing really pops out in terms of actual, like, recorded war events or any sort of specific battles. Whatever you're trying to find, it, you're starting to get the sense that it is being hidden on purpose. Of course it is. You I'm going find, to grab the book. A book on um, it's a uh, roster book of the hallowed members, and their chief officers, as well as different units that they've kept for the past fifty years or so. Right, I'm going to crack it open, flip through, and look for three particular names. Okay. Now here's where it gets interesting for you. For some reason, despite the fact that you're not completely familiar with this writing offhand, you can read it. And your mind is telling you I've never had to read anything in Elvish before but I can understand this and you're flipping through and you recognize names of people you have been in, uh, in the hallowed with you go back several years a couple more decades try to do some cross examination of different names times Two of the names that you're looking for do come up. And I'm going to message you to ask you if they are in fact the ones that I am thinking of. Okay. Yeah. You do see the name of those two individuals. What you don't see is your own name next to them. Is there any sort of information? Is it just, like, birth records? Is it just, like... There is an asterisk <laughs> next to your family name. down there, Mikey. (laughs) 
on the footnote, the asterisk shows to go to a different record of Children of the Hollow. I flip through trying to find the record. What you find are categories of people you haven't heard of. One category is variant human. Another category is shadow touched. And the third category is fey touched. There is a different symbol for each category. Roll an investigation. Yep, that's where the dum dum comes out. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I knew these rolls were too good to be true. You're going to take longer to get there. And while you're doing that, Andy, as you come up to the library, as you are inevitably going to do, as is your nature, <laughs> you see that um, Finn is poring over these record books, scanning intently, trying to make sense of something. Um... Finn, didn't really take you for the bookish sort. Do you need help? I mean, from the looks of it, I probably need plenty, but uh, I'm not entirely sure uh, that's what this is one that you're going to be able to help with. Well, what's the issue? I mean, I've been trying to find answers about a couple different things, and ironically enough, the one that I thought I would have zero chance of finding any answers about up here is the one that is kind of opening up a rabbit hole, so just a little bit taken aback. Oh, and I look over his shoulder at what he's reading. You see... It is a historical record of the families of the Hallowed. So question, actually, before... Um, I don't understand Elvish. Do I... Do Can I read this book? You only would know that from the familiar symbol uh, that is shared on Finn's uniform and on the book itself. Oh. Uh, hallowed stuff, I guess. Yeah, I mean... The, the, there's all sorts of records and things along those lines from from the Westlands and I came trying to get answers about well, about the chastening and I mean I guess I got even more questions about that and I sp spin over the other book that was that I had open off to the side that has everything redacted but like six words to you it is redacted. Andy, you don't see any blank spots on here. What are you talking about? Like 90% of this is blacked out. I can't see shit. <laughs> no, no, it's right here. Uh, inside check to see if she's fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> Matt one. <laughs> She's definitely fucking with you. <laughs> Look, Andy, no, 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 no. I, like, realize... I, I know you're full of fucking jokes and shit, but this is something that I thought was serious and and uh, yeah, honestly, no. no, no, for real, I I can read it. You're telling me that like ninety percent of this isn't blacked out to you. No, like what do you mean, like uh, marked out? Or... Yeah, that's that's certainly what it seemed like to me. No, I can read it. 
Can I tell him, like, can I just, like, pick a, a portion of it and, like, what does it say? Like, and I can read it to him? Well, you don't read Elvish, so you won't be able to... Well, see, unfortunately, I don't read El- Elvish, um, but... Right? Elvish? I don't know. Yes, Elvish. Um, but... Which is different from Sylvan. Wait. Yes, but... Well, I don't read I that either. Um, <laughs> I don't read shit. So you're, you're telling me this is Elvish? Yes. What do you... Uh, Finn, little, oh, Finn what do you what do you see when you look at this? Uh, uh, I guess common. I mean, I can't like I, I've never been able to read Elvish in my life and I mean, I can read this, so I hmm. uh, now you're starting to see a little bit more of the questions and not necessarily being sure if our help. Um well, um, I don't know if anyone else knows how to read Elvish, but maybe they would be able to help. Maybe. I've been thinking about actually looking at that spellbook we, we found, um, Greenstaff's spellbook, and he has, I think, it's hard to read, his notes are very chicken scratchy, but I think he has, um, like a language comprehension spell in it, and I don't know, maybe if I look at it long enough um, mm-hmm. try to decode it, and uh, wizardry is very confusing and honestly not really my forte, but I don't know if anyone else is able to, maybe they would be able to give you better answers. Well, if you magically figure out some sort of a way to to read this and blacked out pages, then I, I'd certainly love to be able to hear what it says, and I, I'm going to throw like a bookmark into that particular page and close it up. <sighs> Finn, if you could do one more um, perception check for me as you move, toss these books aside. Ooh, dirty twenty. Ooh, nice. Okay, one second, please. Oh. Uh. Can't wait till I role play with Finn. <laughs> the juice. Um, as you put that book aside, one thing that uh, you'd notice, and it's one you realized you've never really gotten a chance to have a copy of, but. There's one in front of you, uh, but a copy of the Demonomicon of Igwilv. Something of a bit of a hobby of yours that now you have a pretty good copy of in front of you. That's what I had closed? No, that's just a book that's nearby (laughs) that you happen to happens to That happens to be right there. Yeah. Uh. I'm going to put the one I had closed on top of that one. I'm going to take... Hey, Andy. Yeah? Look, I, I couldn't help but notice. You and I seem to be the only two people that... actually seem to be willing to hear Draven out. In any way, shape, or form. You could uh, say that. I'm kind of torn because you, you got to realize how I was brought up. Oh, I know how you were brought up. Uh, I'm curious as, and I don't know what, if anything, you knew or caught off of Draven, but I'm kind of surprised that you were willing to to even hear him out at all in regards to this. Well, you know what they say, when someone is goes off to college, they just get a lot more open-minded, so you've got to hear everybody's opinions. I listen to you, uh, even though Walker just constantly was angry at you, a, you know, I'm a woman of my own mind. Was? <laughs> is, you know. Room neither one of us barely slept a wink. 
not exactly surprised. Look, I know what what you probably thought about me when first seeing me. And I'm pretty sure I know what everybody thought the first time they ended up seeing Draven. There's a lot of things that can lead people to the places they are in life. Not all of them are good. Not all of them are necessarily bad. But I appreciated the fact that you were at least willing to to hear what he was saying. It's more than I could say about a lot of them. A lot of the other people we were with. Why were you willing to listen to him? Because I know at least a chunk of what he had to have been through. I don't know if everybody else knows anything about him other than what he had said, but that's one of the reasons I was coming and trying to find some information. Because the exact issue that probably created the Draven that we saw the other day is probably what some of the answers in that book are. And all seems to come from the same event. (laughs) And if that's the case, and if Draven really does turn out to be someone that we're going to have to go up against, or be against, or not... It's going to be the second time that he will have taken a bunch of things away from me. Or that that event will have taken a bunch of things away from me. What do you mean? You tend not to... to step out from where you are. Unless you're kind of kicked sometimes. And... I know I'd always got, about that. I'd always gotten the the feeling that something wasn't right. I mean, I... All the training and everything with the hollowed, it was always a pain in the ass. I mean, it sucked. It sucked doubly for me. Uh, granted, that was partially because of my parents, but that's a whole other story. And as much as it sucked, what sucked more is when I finally was able to get into the field and, and got a chance to see how some of the hollowed were treating people. I mean, regardless of what you feel of the laws or anything along those lines, it you could at least make the argument that the law was warlocks, sorcerers, people who weren't who were unbound, needed to at least be apprehended to be able to keep everybody safe. At least that's what we were taught, that's what we were told to do. And we had trainings and things like that of how to do that. How to do that doesn't necessarily entail beating a warlock within an inch of their life. Sometimes killing them in the streets. It didn't include degrading people in public. It doesn't include any of that shit. No, that sounds horrible. And, you know, when you... When you train and train and train, it's one thing because you're just... You're up against training dummies, you're up against everything else, but when they finally put you out into the field on one of these patrols and you see other members of the Hollowed, more senior members than you, doing things like that, I mean, it's fucked up. Yeah. That sounds horrible. So I started questioning what the hell we were even doing. Questioning why they thought that was okay, even off of the teachings of Bahamut. Anyone who's who's read it, he's, he's he's authoritative, yeah. But not punitive. That's not something that he does. That's not something that he teaches. So I started questioning it, and then and then you see how people look at you when you're out in the streets wearing hollowed uniform. 
you see how people that you that you cared about see you and how they react to you much like how Maring had never seen me in my hallowed uniform there was a stretch there because I was ashamed trying to be trying to get out trying to escape in some way shape or form that yeah I'd break out of the uh, break out of the Presidio and 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 go out and just random street clothes things like that and and I'd try to have a good time try to live a life outside of the hollowed mm-hmm. uh, but I guess you can't you can't run away from who you are forever and no cl- clear there are people that I knew of that uh they were less than thrilled and again it seemed to it seemed to stem from that fucking event again and I can't get a straight answer as to what the fuck actually happened but what they put up on a statue and what they teach us sure as hell doesn't jive up with with the perception of there of the people of Lorvec and clearly the people everywhere else Yeah, um, that seems like it would be very difficult. In this moment, you hear the gargoyle that is actively watching over the bookshelf and has been looking down at the two of you the whole time. Yeah, I totally get that. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, deep stuff. Uh, That's going to take some getting used to. Be sure to put those back where you found them. He flies away. Yep. Cool, those are promptly in my bag. <laughs> oh. All three of the books. <laughs> you won't even have to sleight of hand. It's just gonna... Yeah. Go with on an honor system. Uh, I'm his master now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am the librarian now. <laughs> All I know is there's... There's a whole lot more questions that uh, that I just found that hopefully uh, hopefully I get some better news than I'm expecting. Yeah, um, it'll be great for you to get good news, for sure. Awaka, hmm. you have been outside of the library door peering in on this conversation. The words have mixed emotions stirred in you based on your familial past, based on your upbringing, the experiences you've had over the years, eventually to the point, to the present, where you have now had to be in reliance of more people than you've ever had to before. With this amazing tool of accessibility in the tower, what does a person like Awaka look to find? And it doesn't necessarily have to be this floor. Um, I did have an idea of what he would read, but upon hearing this conversation, he kind of tables that for a second. And reaches into his bag and pulls out a book. A book that he's had for a long time. Um, not the bound book that everyone's familiar with, with all the gun schematics, but a, what looks like a very dirty and old journal with the symbol of the hallowed on the front. kind of tap it in my hands and I go fuck it and I turn the corner into the room and I just go nice speech holy man oh hi 
didn't realize we had an audience. It's all right. So, I got a question for you. Since you're looking for answers, you don't talk like them. Hell, you drink more than any of them that I've been around. And you seem to have an understanding of the outside perception. First thing, have you ever seen any of my kind besides me before? I have. Where? By any chance? At a meeting between the Hollowed and, the, and a tribe on the outskirts of the Westlands? I look at Finn and I kind of subtract the piercings and the mohawk and I imagine him about maybe a foot to maybe two feet shorter. You know... <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know, I couldn't shake this feeling I've had now. I just usually attributed it to my gut, but... And the fact that you're wearing that crest, but, uh... I think we've met before. You see, I was at that meeting, too. And now, I don't remember seeing a kid at the third or fourth meeting, so I guess you only saw the political side of things, I guess. What are you talking about? There were only two meetings. <laughs> uh, no. You see, I don't know if you remember in that second meeting, but um, there was an argument between one of the more ornery of the paladins in attendance and several of our elders who had healed a gravely wounded hunter, several broken bones using... Holistic healing magic, I guess. I guess what Andy, I guess what you or Finn would call druid craft. Yeah, I mean things got things got heated, but it seemed to everything had calmed down. I don't know what Well About two days later, about fifteen fully armed paladins attacked our convoy and village. Their goal was to find and apprehend said uh, blasphemers who would dare delve into the unknown of bringing someone back from the dead. Sound familiar? The, everything I knew of it all ended that day. Everything got, got wiped down. That... Well, it got wiped down a couple of days later, because you see, that column of soldiers badly injured three of our elders, including our chief elder, who at the time was um, on her last legs, and uh, she died that night. So, the next elder and her advisor waited until the paladins were at a point in the desert where they had to take a nap and a break and I don't, I don't know they just had a camp and I don't know if you know anything about my people but we know the desert inside and out, upside and under the sand there's a reason why the hollow don't go into our territory and the reason why we don't go anywhere near Lorvec and it's because we handed y'all an embarrassment. Fifteen of ya, fifteen paladins held hostage. Now, suitable payment was... We didn't think that there was suitable payment for the death of an elder, but they brought back platinum medicine, stuff that we could use for our folks. 
and the agreement was that we would never cross paths again. Now, it sounds like you got a little bit of that nastiness before, correct? And you're starting to see the other side. Starting to feel that venom and that deep feeling of fear in people's hearts when they see hallowed rolling down the street. And I think that's a good thing. Which is why. Because since y'all seem so intent on learning whatever this Draven guy is trying to do and you don't know if you want to be on his side or not even though I personally think a man that let an entire town almost get turned into flesh abominations shouldn't be followed the fuck at all. And then I hold up the book. About five years ago, only time I've ever been to Lorvac, I was escorted in. <laughs> given a tour more like led by a heavily armed guard under threat of death. And then I was led to one of these, I don't know, a lieutenant, I guess you can call them, really tightly wound kind of woman. She offered me, offered me a job. Now, I don't know if you know the name Falstaff Grossmore at all. Anything ringing a bell there? That'll spell detect thoughts on Finn. DM what I have? The name Falstaff Grossmore is one of the more notorious hallowed members infamous for their extreme nature in their approach and some would say overzealous style I can't say that I can't say I know too much about him other than he, he's got a reputation for being a jerk off <laughs> a little bit more than that see what was explained to me was that he went insane and murdered a bunch of you the murdered a bunch of innocent people and then ran off out of Lorovec saying that he decided to switch sides and worship Tiamat or something. I don't know. Anyway, I was given the choice, again, choice, to find this gentleman and bring him back to Lorvec. So, I looked, searched every lead, whisper, every goddamn side hole of a town on this whole continent, until... An old woman told me about a hermit living in a cave on the eastern mountains. So I go to check it out, figuring I'm just going to find an old man, and I have to admit what I found kind of puzzles me to this day. I found Falstaff Grossmore, or at least what used to be him. He was hiding in a cave somewhere, dirty, naked as a jaybird. His armor was thrown into a corner, rusted out, and he was writing on the walls. And I guess his own blood, feces, I don't know, it was something of a sight. Then it was like, he was mumbling mad things about Tiamat and Bahamut and 
how everything will become unbalanced again and blah 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 and again in all that time I didn't know anything but he turned and saw me and thought I was sent to smite him as a, a demon sent by Bahamut and Tiamat and he picked up his great sword and went to make a move and collapsed on the ground Motherfucker's heart must have exploded. Probably hadn't lifted that great sword in years. So I searched through his belongings, see what I could find. I doubt the hallowed were, were going to be happy with me bringing back a corpse, so anything would have helped. And I found this. Now, unfortunately, I've never been able to read this fucking thing. It's entirely in Draconic. And not only that, as you can see, and I open up the journal, and I show how it starts off with, like, elegantly written, like, statements and dates, and then it slowly dissolves page by page over years of entries into just babbling, like, hastily written Draconic that looks like a five-year-old wrote it. And I've always been curious about what it says. And I shut the book. And I walk over. And I place it on... Well, it's... It, would you have the books in a stack, or would they be in your bag? I shifted them all into my bag already, after right. the gargoyle ran off. <laughs> I go up to you, and I go... And I put the book on your chest. Can you read your comic? I can. Well then. One coincidence is a coincidence, but two coincidences is a thread. And I don't know if you've been paying attention. We've been running into a whole lot of fucking coincidences. That's so I don't one know way to if, put it. So I don't know if what's in this can help. Well, it certainly can't hurt. Thank you. At it, holy man. Thank you. And I, t and I turn around and I go to leave. And as I leave, I'm going, I'm going to go try to find a bar in this fucking place. <laughs> By the way, Andy. Yes. Not now, but maybe later. I got some spells. I got some spell gun schematics I need help looking at. All right, uh, no problem. Um, you I'll help you with that. Yeah, I'll help you with that later. Good. Spectator! Where can a guy get some fucking whiskey in this place? And I walk out of the library. <laughs> Finn. Mm-hmm. Do you open the book, or do you put it away? I open it. I've been too laser focused on trying to find out any sort of the truth for far too long. It is very much how Awaka put it. It starts off with almost poetic and philosophizing style of speech about these grand ideas of the greater concept of the dyad, the idea of the respect between life and death. What lies beyond? What do we know? Is there more to it? The understanding that there should be more openness to the discovery of such feelings. That those who innocently research these ideas outside of the standard pedagogy and the the beaten down tenets of the religions that while they say they are accepting of a multiversal nature it is very obvious that they are and this era limiting it 
to only two of the Draconic Pantheon. And while there are so many churches around that have different gods they worship, one of which you were able to encounter yourselves with Lythander, as it goes on through the years, the words become more panicked, more of a mindset that they are being watched by what they are doing, that their research is being criticized. There are harsh words thrown at the pontifex. They're, the language is careful so as not to be deemed heretical. But as the years go on, you even see more that that is put aside. And eventually, as the ramblings become more aggressive and more almost erratic, hate-filled towards the unbelievers, those who would be bound to only one idea, those who would be bound to believing that all of this is exactly what the church says it is, talking about how they will seek out the truth, they will pierce the veil, they will go beyond, they will look past the lights of the souls of those who have departed, they will look around and be guided by the lines that bound this earth. They will seek out those who find favor in the ones who are cast aside. They will look for the unbound. And eventually, madness incoherence, insanity, until the very end, where you see four clear words. And it seems that in this draconic, it is written in blood. The dyad is false. And that's where we're going to end our session. <laughs>